Hello learners, or should I say, how's it, or oh, hater? Uh, I hope your revision program is going well, especially in your most interesting subject. Obviously, that's geography. Now, uh, I know, map work. Whenever that word is mentioned, things like GIS, uh, cross sections, gradient comes to mind. And I know that's nightmares for some students. The words ish, or ah, ah, I don't like map work comes through. But actually, map work doesn't have to be that difficult uh, in the sense that the content to cover is far less. And remember, you've been doing map work from uh, a, a primary school, and from grade 10, you've done most of the calculations, etc. So you know exactly what is going to be there and the resources that you're going to get, like a map and an autophoto, you know exactly what you're going to get. So uh, are we going to, today we're going to look at how we can make studying of map work easier and enjoyable. All right? Uh, number one, uh, I think very important for us to remember that when we're writing the paper, we must carry the equipment. Don't forget, keep your checklist. Uh, for me, this is the problem. Whenever my learners are writing map work, they're coming to me for this, the protractor. Now, I like the full circle, but if you don't have it, the semicircle, the full circle, because if it's measuring past 180 degrees, uh, you can measure it much far more easier. Obviously, your paper, if a cross section comes out, uh, maybe at the end of the year, it may not allow you, but you can actually use part of your uh, question paper. There's a section for rough work. Uh, your ruler, don't forget that, you need it. I use a full ruler because it covers the map, but if you don't have this, small ruler is fine. I also like to use a set square if it's coordinates, measuring of coordinates, because it gives me a straight uh, center and I can put this on the line of latitude. So it gives me a more accurate, also for true bearing, uh, piece of string. If you're measuring winding distance, please guys, Make sure that this string doesn't stretch, okay? Because if it stretches, then it's going to give you the incorrect uh, measurement. Your, obviously, your calculator you have. I've got a nice big one because I'm getting old and my eyes are getting a bit weak, okay? And we set for the map work paper itself. Now, the next thing we're going to look at, let's look at the structure of the paper. Number one, and I'll show it to you on the board here, is that uh, this paper is one and a half hours long. So it gives you enough time. We don't have to stress, right? You have enough time to, to work the section out, or to work the paper out, rather. It's four questions, and it's for 100 marks. So 100 marks for an hour and a half. Now, let's look at... Uh, what type of questions do we have? We have the multiple choice questions first, which is 20 marks. And maybe before I go on, I need to just mention that on the quest, you answer on the question paper, okay? Uh, you don't have additional material. Uh, with the multiple choice, you'll get little blocks on the side down here where you will put down the correct letter. Uh, under under the, uh, multiple choice, it covers all the sections that you need to cover. Uh, for map work. Then the next one we get is the calculations. Uh, uh, your normal ones such as your uh, cross sections, your bearing, average gradient, vertical exaggeration, intervisibility, uh, all that you have done in your calculations, you can get tested on this section. Uh, the third section itself is the uh, map interpretation. Uh, the first two sections are 20 marks each for the, uh, the multiple choice is 20 marks and the, uh, and the calculations are 20 marks. The interpretation is actually 40 marks. Uh, this will cover your photographs, your relief, your drainage, vegetation, conservation, infrastructure, land use, settlement. Uh, so what we can see from this section, it involves quite a bit of your theory. 
section, your paper one section. I suppose that is why you write both papers on, on, one, on one day because you need to use them. They uh, actually mix up quite often. Then if you look at the next section, which is for 20 marks, and I don't know why students worry but uh, about this section, and that's your geography information systems. And this is 20 marks. Obviously, this would cover your concepts, uh, uh, also source of information for GIS, GIS, layering of information, data manipulation analysis uh, of GIS, all right? All those things there. And uh, we will talk about GIS at a later stage. Uh, just remember for this paper itself, uh, two marks are given for each point. Uh, uh, where when you're doing your explanations or you're identifying something on the map itself, two marks are given. Just for the calculations where we give one mark for each step. Remember, show your steps in your calculations. If you're just going to put the answer, you're not going to get full marks. We mark the steps. Uh, why? Because if sometimes your steps are correct, your answer is incorrect, you still get marks for that. Now, let's look at some other hints and tips down here. Let's just look at the hints and tips. Make sure you know all your sections from the 2009 guideline. If you don't have one, you can approach your teacher, all right? This exam guideline tells you exactly uh, what you need to know for map work. Again, as I mentioned, relate your map work to the theory. For instance, under map work, or under theory rather, you're gonna have stream patterns. You're gonna have drainage patterns. Drainage patterns such as dendritic, trellis, uh, and you just do it in terms of diagrams. At the same time, when you're doing those sections under your theory, take out a map and look at how the stream patterns look there. So integrating the sections. I also speak about a four-point method, which you can use for all your subjects. The first one is know the purpose of the section. Why are you doing it? You know, an old one I had, I always use this when I start teaching. You've learned that in magnetic declination, west you add, East you subtract. And we learn it off in parrot fashion. But look at the reason of why you do that. All right? Let's look at it. Uh, you know on the side of your map you got the true north and then you got the magnetic north. All right? On any map. If I show it to you down here, you will notice there's it down there. All right? Now, if I move this line West, obviously this is the magnetic declination, is the angle formed between the two. If I move this line west, the angle gets bigger, so we add. If I move this line east, the angle gets smaller, so we subtract. Now we know the reason of why we add or we subtract. And once we remember that, guys, then we don't forget. Okay, because you know the purpose. The next thing is, is you need to know the section. You need to know your content. All right? And the next thing is you need to know how to apply your section or your concept. All right? Of course, that you get in the class or through a, a book or whatever. And then you need to apply. And this part in map work is the most important. We tend to learn map work off, but we don't apply it. Use as many map works as po uh, maps as possible, past papers as possible, so you don't forget. You use it, use it, use it, so when you come to the exam, you know how to apply your stuff. I always use this point here, guys, that the map is alive. You know, I'm taking my students and I always put, make them put their ears next to the map and I want them to hear it breathe. And of course, before they start map work, they, they can't hear it breathe, but at the end, they can. You need to see this map, and you need to see the life that, when I look at this map, I can actually see valleys, I can see cultivation, I can see the CBD. So you need to familiarize yourself with the map, the details of the map. So that's why I say this map is alive. It's got so much, it's a flat piece of paper, but you can see so much into it. So it's very important. You will be getting these two resources on most cases, your topo map, which is 1 is to 50,000, 
and an autophoto map, which is 1 is to 10,000. So you will get in these two resources. People, before you start your paper, make sure you familiarize yourself with this map and autophoto. Where are this thing? Where is the autophoto on the map? Now, I want to refer to a little thing here which I want to show you. This, remember, that is your topo map, your autophoto scale. And orientating your map will be so, so, so important. Like I took a little visual here. I look at the road on this map. And I look at the road uh, on, uh, sorry, on the autophoto and the road on the map. And I try to align the photograph and the map. So if I look at it down here, I see a nice road down here. And I can identify the same road down here. So I know exactly where it is. In most cases, they will give you a block to show you this point, uh, where it is, where the photograph is. But you can also align. So sometimes, if I had to ask you a point of what is this on the autophoto, and you're looking here, you understand? And it may not be clear. Or somewhere else, what is that? And it may look like, or number 12 may look like a park or a forest area or a recreation, but you're not sure. But if you align it and you look at exactly where it is on the topo map, it says golf course. So you don't have to guess. So aligning this is very important. All right? Another thing also is the features that's found or the information given on the side, which is things like your reference, your magnetic declination, you understand your, what projections are being used. So you need to examine all that first so you can work out with the map later. For instance, there are symbols. Sometimes I could say, what is limiting farming down here? And, there's, and if you don't look at the uh, references, you've got a problem because you may not see it. But if I look at the symbol here and I look at the symbol down here, it says mine dumps and excavations. So if I refer to that, you understand? I would say, okay, that is limiting. So looking at the information, once that is done, I've sorted the map out. I know exactly where my orientation is. I'm then going to start answering the questions. So, people, I wish you well, and I hope this little overview of what we should look for in the exams will help you. I know there are brilliant people out there that's sitting there and who's going to score top marks in geography. So at the end of the year, when I am marking, I'm going to smile all the time because I'm going to see a lot of A's. All the best, guys. Study hard.